while Synology are more noted for their network attached storage rather than their routers. Their experience with NAS devices has allowed them to integrate basic file sharing into their line of routers. So in this video, we're going to take a look at how you enable file sharing services on a Synology router in order to create a network share. Let's start by first signing into Synology Router Manager using our administrator's credentials. As Synology routers do not have internal storage, we will need to use an external USB drive. While this drive can either be a physical or solid state drive, due to the limitations of USB, there will be no speed advantages to using a solid state drive. So because physical drives are cheaper, for this example, we will be using a four terabyte Western digital USB hard drive, which has no files stored on it. Let's connect our USB hard drive to one of the USB ports on our router. Returning to Synology Router Manager, we should find that we receive a system event that warns us that USB 3 will interfere with our router's Wi-Fi, so our USB connection has been downgraded to USB 2. While data transfer speeds over USB 2 will be substantially slower than USB 3, more than likely because the Wi-Fi in our router will be acting as a data bottleneck. Using USB 2 should not be a major issue, as long as only one or two devices are using our network share. Next, we need to open the control panel. Now from the sidebar, if we select storage, within the main panel, we will see our USB hard drive. While our drive has been marked as USB share 1-1, any additional drives that we connect to our router will be assigned with the name USB share, then a number that has been incremented up by one. Let's select the storage tab and check our USB drive. As you can see, our USB hard drive is a four terabyte drive, which has a single partition, which is being formatted with VFAT. So in this state, our USB drive is able to use long file names when connected to a Mac or PC. Let's return to shared folder. In order to create a network share, we will need to create a folder on our USB hard drive that our router can see. So we now need to select the add folder icon to create a new folder on our external USB hard drive. We're then informed that our USB drive is not compatible with our router. This is because we deliberately formatted our USB hard drive in a specific way so that you can see this message. However, if your USB hard drive has been formatted using FAT32, this message will not appear. Let's click OK and return to storage. Now with our USB hard drive highlighted, if we select Format, we are presented with a formatting option window. To keep things simple, we're going to format the entire disk. Then in File System, we need to choose which file system that we want to use. For example, if you want to share your USB drive with a computer and your router, you will need to use FAT32. However, as FAT32 will only support hard drives smaller than 2 terabytes, and our hard drive is 4 terabytes, we're going to need to either partition our hard drive into two volumes of 2 terabytes or use EXT4. Let's click OK and allow our router to reformat our external hard drive. With our hard drive now reformatted, if we return to shared folder, you may have noticed that the name of our USB drive changed after we reformatted the drive. Let's now try and create a new shared folder on our USB hard drive. When we select the new folder button, a create new shared folder window will open. For this example, we're going to create a shared folder that anyone on our home network can use in order to quickly share files. So we're going to name this folder public. However, it should be noted that our public folder will only be public to users connected to our home network and each user will need to have access rights in order to be able to access it. Next, we're going to enable Recycle Bin so that we can easily recover files or folders that have been accidentally deleted. As our public folder 
is specifically intended to allow easy sharing over our home network, we will leave Encrypt This Shared Folder unticked. When we click OK, a folder called Public is created on our external hard drive and our system admin account is automatically assigned read-write access to that folder. Let's click Apply to make sure that our router has saved our settings. Now from the sidebar, if we choose File Services, as Windows, Linux and Mac OS are all compatible with a protocol called Server Message Block, we only need to enable Windows File Service. You may have noticed a field called Workgroup. A workgroup is an old Microsoft idea created to make it easier to set up and use network resources like printers and file sharing. However, over time, as we've become more familiar with how networks work, workgroups have fallen out of favor, so we can ignore this setting and leave it on its default. One of the reasons we don't recommend that you use your Synology router for file sharing is that currently it's only able to support SMB2. SMB, or Server Message Block, is the network protocol used in order to allow devices on our home network to communicate with each other. However, as SMB2 is no longer considered to be secure, and most devices now default to supporting SMB3, you should be very careful about what information you place in the network shares created on your Synology router. While we will not be changing any other SMB settings, you can tweak the performance of SMB by enabling large MTU or adjusting the options in advanced settings. Directly under advanced settings, we have a note explaining how we access our SMB shares from either Windows or Mac OS. We then have a heading called Mac File Service, which provides us with options to enable Mac File Service, Time Machine, and Bonjour Print Broadcast. However, as Apple Macintosh computers have now been standardized on SMB, we can leave all of the settings in Mac File Service disabled. After selecting Apply, because we will be enabling SMB services, our router will notify us that we will be making changes to its firewall. As you can see, it's going to allow SIFS traffic, which is an implementation of SMB, to pass through ports 137, 138, 139, and 445. Let's click on OK to update our firewall. Having created a shared folder and then enabled file sharing services on our router, we next need to create user accounts that will allow the users of our home network to access our network shares. If from the sidebar we select user, we can see in the main panel that only the administrator's account is currently active. As it's considered bad practice, to use the administrator's account in order to connect to network shares, we're going to need to create standard user accounts for each of the users who will be using the network shares on our router. To do this, we simply need to select the add icon and set a username and password for each new user account that we create. Then under the shared folders permissions heading, we will see all network shares that have been created. So we now need to choose what access permissions this user will have to our shares. These options include no access, read-write access, and read-only access. So because we want our user to be able to access, save, or copy files and folders from our public folder, we need to tick the box under read-write. Then because we only want our users to be able to access specific folders on the external hard drive we connected to our router, we're going to leave the options for SMB Share 1 unticked. This will mean that while a user browsing our network shares will be able to see a share called USB Share 1, they will not be able to access that share, so will not be able to access all of the data stored on the external hard drive that we've connected to our router. Let's click Apply and take a look at connecting either a macOS or Windows computer to our network share. On macOS, there are a number of ways that we can access our network share. However, the most reliable method is via the menu option in Finder. If from the menu bar of Finder, we select Go, and from the drop-down menu, choose the option Connect to Server, we will be presented with a Connect to Server window. Now in the Server Address field, if we type SMB, 
colon forward slash forward slash Synology router. When we press connect, we're asked to connect as either a guest or a registered user. In the name field, if we enter the name of the user account we just created, along with its password, we will be able to access our network share. However, so that we do not have to continually enter our user account credentials each time we try and access our share, before we click connect, we're going to tick the option, remember this password in my keychain. When we select connect, we are presented with a list of the network shares that our computer can see. However, as we do not have access to USB Share 1, we're simply going to highlight public and choose OK. A Finder window for public will now open, and in order to test that everything is working correctly, we're going to create and delete a folder in our public share. Let's dismount our network share and try and access our public folder in a slightly different way. Once again, if we select go from the menu bar of Finder and click on connect to server, this time we're going to connect to our network share using the IP address of our router. So while we need to keep SMB colon forward slash forward slash, we're going to delete Synology router and replace it with our router's IP address. Now to speed up the process for accessing our public folder, if we add a forward slash, followed by the word public, our network share will automatically open. Let's once again dismount our network share and take a look at how we can use Finder to browse for a network share. If from the dock, we open a Finder window. In the sidebar under the heading Locations, you will find an option called Network. If we select Network, a list of the devices on our home network will be displayed. From this list, if we open Synology Router and then Connect As, because our computer has remembered our user credentials, we're now shown a list of the network shares on our router. If we now select Public, our public share will open. In order to access our network share in Windows, we're going to need to open File Explorer. Now in the address bar, if we type backslash backslash, then enter the IP address of our router, when we press enter on our keyboard, we're shown a list of our network shares. Alternatively, if we once again open File Explorer, and in the address bar, type backslash backslash, then the word Synology Router. When we press enter on our keyboard, once again, a list of our network shares are displayed. From this list, if we now select public, our network share will open. It's worth noting that we were not prompted for a username and password. This is because the user account and password that we're using to log into Windows matches the username and password that we created for our network shares. However, if you're using a Microsoft account in order to sign into your version of Windows, you'll be prompted for user credentials in order to log into the network shares on your router. We're now going to test that we've correctly set the access permissions to our network shares by simply seeing if we can create and then delete a folder. While opening shared folders from within File Explorer is fairly straightforward. As a Windows user, you're probably more familiar with browsing through your network shares. However, as the file server functionality on your router is a little basic, you might find that your Synology router does not allow you to browse for your network shares when you enable network discovery. So for example, in network, if our router is not also being displayed under the heading computers, we will not be able to browse for our shared folders. It's also worth noting that while our router might be displayed under other headings, as these headings refer to different elements of our home network, they will not let us browse our network shares. For example, if we click on the Synology SRM icon under the heading Network Infrastructure, 
Our browser will open and take us to the sign-in page for Synology Router Manager. To fix this issue, you may find that by rebooting your router, the problem is resolved and Synology Router appears in File Explorer under the heading Computers. However, as we cannot guarantee that this fix will work, you may be better served by simply mapping your network shares. What you just viewed was heavily edited, as we initially had problems connecting Windows to the network shares created on our router. So rather than smoothly connecting to our shared folders like Mac OS did, Windows would present us with a network error message informing us that we could not access our public folder. As our router is only able to use SMB2, the issue must be related to either Windows or our router's implementation of SMB. So we decided to first check to see which version of SMB Windows was using. To do this, we needed to use a terminal command. So after clicking on the start button and typing terminal in the search bar, by choosing terminal from the search results, a PowerShell window will open. Now from within PowerShell, if we type get dash SMB server configuration, pipe, then to check that SMB2 is installed on our computer, we type select enable SMB2 protocol. When we press enter on our keyboard, we receive confirmation that SMB2 is enabled in Windows. So as SMB2 is installed in Windows, and this computer is able to connect to shares made on a Synology NAS, the problem must be related to an issue with our router. If we log back into our Synology router, as the settings to SMB are all correct, we began to suspect something called SMB caching, which is a method for improving response times when accessing network shares. While cache files can speed up accessing network shares, if those cache files become corrupt, they can cause access or permission problems. So luckily, there's an easy way to flush the SMB cache. If we once again open Control Panel, and from the sidebar, select File Services, in the Windows Mac panel, we will find an option called Advanced Settings. If we open Advanced Settings, at the bottom of this window, we have an option called Clear SMB Cache. When we select this option, we are prompted that network services will restart and we're asked if we wish to continue. After selecting yes, we can close control panel and sign out of Synology Router Manager. If we now return to Windows and try and open our network share, Windows no longer displays an error message and we can access the network shares that we've created on our router. So to summarize, in this video, we took a look at how you create network shares on a Synology router. We then demonstrated how you access a network share from macOS or Microsoft Windows before looking at troubleshooting a problem that we had with SMB caching. However, before we finish up, it's worth noting that because Synology routers are only able to use a limited version of SMB2, and SMB2 is no longer considered to be secure, it's not a good idea to use a Synology router as a file server for anything other than acting as a file drop in order to move non-personal data from one computer to another.